Sailing on a budget means that although we are currently right next to civilization, we can't eat out all the time. French toast is probably not the healthiest option, but it's relatively quick and easy to make, and it's a good feed on a rainy day. What are you doing? I'm writing my diary. I'm trying to work out what quote we're going to buy next. I've got a list of things that I would like to have in my next boat. Moment of truth. Does oh, it well, fit? Actually, nobody knows, but we, I built this box. So I got, went to Bunnings and bought some plywood and I got them to cut it up for me. And they actually did a pretty good job of cutting it nice and square. So um, before the weekend, um, we put some glue on it and nailed it all together. And we can see if the flying machine fits in the box. Oh. Like a glove. Like a glove. Where's the lid? The lid? Put a ratchet strap or something over the top of that and you can throw it in the back. Oh, we'll get some varnish on it as well. What have we got? Well, it's been melted now, but a second ago we had hailstones coming down. It's been exciting. It's been very still and hot all day. And now it's raining. Oh, well, we've got no leaks in the boat. We've got a couple leaks. Where? Um, there's a wet patch there. Well, that's because you didn't close the window. True. Where else? Coming in through there, but we got that on on purpose because otherwise we get no airflow in the boat at all. But check out how much water's coming in already. This has only been raining for like five minutes. Is it water? Are you excited? Press proper storm. We used to have a leak just up here by the mast. Now I've fixed that. No more water. There's still a bit of water coming down there. I met Craig who very kindly found us a spot to park Philindra in for a while, asked us to be guinea pigs for a sailing school he was setting up and we signed up for our next level in sailing qualifications. This would include a night exercise navigating the Brisbane River. The Brisbane River is quite a busy place and all the high rise buildings are quite spectacular. But between the busy schedules of the ferries going back and forth and the tight anchorages, I'm kind of glad we didn't try to anchor up here. Craig is also a member of the Southport Yacht Club and participates in a lot of their races. His competitive streak mixed with the fact that he usually recruits an awesome crew like us means that he manages to stay fairly high up on the ladder. A man. So I think this is our first sewing project, is it not? I've done a few. What have you done? Things. Okay. Anyway, this is the um, the sail bag cover of the front of the mast, and it's just showing a bit of wear. So we're trying to just sew that back, and so it doesn't rip itself to pieces, and. So yeah, this is my first time using this machine actually. You've used it before, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. I had a few knots, but 
what you get for a three hundred dollar machine. It always seems like there's just one more project on a boat. Truth is, boat jobs are never done, but one must make a determined effort to leave, or it will never happen. We're off. We are off, finally, and this time we're leaving the Gold Coast for good. Probably not for good, but but for a little while anyway. All's going well. The tide is still coming up, which is not ideal. We've got current coming straight at us, and we're doing about three knots. Three knots forward motion. Probably another couple of knots through the water. See where we end up tonight. Probably a place called Percy's Hole or Perry's Hole, I think it is. And if that's no good, we'll go to Slipping Sands. And if that's no good, we'll keep going to Braby Bay. Unfortunately, there is no indication from the camera to say the sound quality is about to be terrible due to the wind. So another segment needs to be dubbed. Plan B had us anchoring up in a completely different place, the famous jumping pin. Although there was a bit of a hole to anchor up in at Perry's Hole, we would not have been able to leave the low water mark. We also decided we were a bit close to the mangroves on either side, and the chances of being eaten alive by mozzies and sandflies were pretty high. There also wouldn't have been a chance to get off the boat because nowhere to land a dinghy. So this is the bar we'd have to cross if we wanted to get from Jumping Pen into the South Pacific. Um, the Jumping Pen is back there. We are linking up through there somewhere. And that is the ocean. And behind me is the bar we'd have to cross. Definitely not at the moment though, because it's low water at the moment, so we'd, uh, we're definitely at the bottom. Uh, and they say don't cross that bar unless you've got a lot of local knowledge, and uh, I'm happy to go with that. It looks pretty, uh, uh, well, that doesn't look like a lot of fun crossing through there, especially at the moment. I think even a slack water would be a bit, a bit rough. Maybe we had a prawn pump. There are prawns all over this beach. Little crabs and stuff everywhere too. So the other day we had to fix the seats on the water boat. And um, so we actually put it all together for the first time today and it doesn't look too bad, actually. A lot stronger than what it was. The next thing to go is gonna be the foam on the sides. Running out of fuel when there's this much current flowing through the anchorage is definitely not advisable. It would be very tiring, if not impossible, paddling against it. Quite a sizable log coming down the river. You don't want to be hitting that. Do some damage that one. I'm doing the dishes. I'm cleaning and listening to an audio book. Okay. And throwing things over the side back. So. I lost oh. a fork. Hopefully nothing more than a fork. Alright, you're gonna swim for it tomorrow, eh? But not now because there's lots of sharks around. Next time we get to Raby Bay, just in time to sit tight for the next big blow. We find a few organisms that are likely responsible for hampering our progress, and we spend some time at the local hotspot, Horseshoe Bay.